afternoon, Public Information, Kathleen. Yes. Am I speaking with a sworn peace officer? A who? A sworn peace officer, somebody that took an oath to the Constitution? No, I am a receptionist. Uh, may I please speak with a, a sworn police officer? You're asking a whole lot of questions. How can I help you, ma'am? What do you want me to do? I want to know, when it, if it comes down to it, will the police go to my home if, I ref if my husband refuses to give up a weapon that was formerly legal and now has been made illegal by a corrupt legislator? Will the police actually go to my home and threaten my family? Because I'm scared to we death. Don't threaten, we don't threaten people, ma'am. That, that if you're happen. going with the force of government, that's a threat. Ma'am, uh, you know, it sounds like you're anti-American. It sounds like you're anti-law. I'm anti-American? No, I'm pro-American. I'm pro-American. Pro I'm pro-American. Are you okay, serious? But, you just called me anti-American? No, ma'am. Are you going to call me a terrorist you, now you, because I have questions? I don't have time for this, ma'am. I don't have time for this. Now, if you don't want an answer to any questions, then I, then I think our conversation is over. I do want an answer. I would suggest I really that you want contact an your attorney. And have your attorney explain the laws to you and what you're your rights are. To, what you're going to speak do, to me this way, someone that pays your salary as resident of the Connecticut. I pay my own salary too, ma'am. I pay taxes probably just like you do. You, well, you're so. a servant. You serve me. You don't serve the legislator, sir. Remember? I serve everyone, ma'am. Everyone listening to Well, that's state right. Of that's right. Well, including myself, ma'am. You don't serve the legislator, sir. You, I do, ma'am. You have to decide what you're going to do when it comes down okay, to it. Okay, ma'am. This is not a conversation I'm going to have with you because, really, it's not your affair what I do and what I don't do. Really? If you come to my home and threaten the, me with the force of government... I would never do that, ma'am. I would never do that. never come to your home, ma'am. Absolutely would not do that because I don't do that kind of work. So you don't have to worry about that at all. Well, maybe not you, but you're the lower people in your under your ranks. That yes, ma'am. Okay. That's yeah, the We only threat. enforce the laws that are broken. And if any laws are broken, we're sworn by... Or sworn by the Constitution well, remember to enforce this, those laws. Okay, remember the Supreme Court used to rule that black people were not human. Okay, and I think I think it's 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 up to you to to talk with your legislators and talk. Well, with Well, the your, legislators your, don't listen. They don't there's listen. Nothing I can do about it, man. Yes, there is there's because you can, can refuse to follow unlawful orders. Okay. If you okay. can't do that, then means you're an enemy of America. Okay, ma'am. I'm not discussing this with. I think our conversation's over. I suggest you contact your attorney, ma'am. So really, okay. so all right. Just remember, okay. You're the servant. We're the masters, okay. And if you come to master, my home, I'm the master. You're really, absolutely right. You're the Thank master. You very much for your no, you're your the servant. Man. You're the servant. We're the masters. Yeah. Thank you, you come very to my much home. For conversation, man. Okay. <laughs>
your freedom. The blood and the treasure that has been expended on behalf of all of us, by all of our military, present and in the past, cannot be forsaken, it cannot be in vain. But the key thing is this, all of our legislators, state and federal, take a what? And take an oath to protect and uphold the Constitution of both their state and the United States of America. Law enforcement, local police, your sheriffs, your troopers, hell, even the firemen, they take a very similar oath to protect and uphold the Constitution. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, period. There is no gray area here. You don't get to pick and choose what part of the Constitution you want to uphold. You uphold it all. I watched in horror at what happened at Sandy Hook, as did all of us. I was in tears on my couch. And you know, sadly, the first thing I thought of was, you know what, Barack Obama is going to use this. He's not going to let any crisis go to waste. Shame on him. Shame on him for using dead children and the parents of dead children as props in an effort to put forth his ideology of gun confiscation. greatest country that God gave man. And we are not going to allow anybody, anybody, to take our guns away. It isn't going to happen. Ladies and gentlemen, I hear way too many commentary in the public, and even with some of the state reps in your state and mine, that talk about the Second Amendment like it's about hunting. They talk about the Second Amendment like the entirety of it is about self-defense. Surely that's important. But come on, the real reason the Second Amendment is second is because of its importance. It is there to protect the entire Constitution. It is the protector of it. The Constitution is the document upon which and the foundation upon which this entire country was built. We are not going to allow what is happening to continue any longer. The reason for the Second Amendment and the reason why we need high capacity magazines and semi-automatic weapons is so we can fight off a tyrannical government is so we have compatible weapons. That's the reason for the Second Amendment. Open the rooftop. Now let's be honest with each other. We have dropped the ball. The fact that these and now many more of you have to get out here again. You have to make sure that every representative and every congressman that you vote for, that their first order of business is that they tell you they will uphold the Constitution and the Second Amendment of the Constitution. And I'm going to tell you something else. I'm a Republican, a conservative Republican. But I don't care about that anymore. Let's be honest. We have to start blurring the R and the D beside people's names and start realizing that we are all in this together. We are Americans guy by guy before we're anything else. And we better start acting like it. Time is running out. We're heading over a cliff. And if we're going to reel this back in, then all of you have to stand tall. And by the way, I am, by the way, an advocate of having one of my favorite sheriffs in the United States of America, Sheriff Joe Arpaio, to take some, <laughs> to take some posses and go down to Washington, D.C. and put this man in an orange suit. In fact, pink, pink is his suit. Pink would look better, sorry, and drag his butt out of that White House. This is 
a disgrace. The tyranny that we're confronted with, I never thought that the age that I'm at, that I would have to come out and speak to these issues. For that matter, most of you, I'm sure, never thought of it either. But you know what? It doesn't matter how old you are. It really doesn't. It's, it's going to take, it took 3% back in 1760, 1776, and it's going to take 3% now. I look across the landscape here, I see people from all walks of life, all income strata. I see the veterans, I see the oath keepers, I see you guys, I see the three percenters, I see all the Tea Party flags and the Gatson flags. This is America, we're not the extremists. By God, if you believe in the Constitution, and you believe in America, and you believe in this republic, and you believe in small government, and people call you an extremist, then bring it on! That's what we are! We came here from New Hampshire, which by the way, is the live free or die state. And we take that oath seriously. That's our motto. And when we came marching in today, we were deadly serious. We came to stand shoulder to shoulder with every Connecticut patriot, well, even Canadians if they were here, but every Connecticut patriot that's here today. We are all in this together, and it's time we better all wake up in the United States of America to this fact. I will expect you, if we run into a problem, to come to New Hampshire and stand with us. In closing, I just want to say this. The day after Sandy Hook occurred, my 13-year-old, she's now 50, but my 13-year-old granddaughter came to my house. And she was upset as any child of their age would be. And she said to me, Papa, my school has the same security system that Sandy Hook had. And that man just shot right through the door, went right in. And she said, we have the same security lockdown system. When we get in the classroom and they put us down in the corner of the classroom and the doors locked, we always wonder what would happen if somebody came in with a weapon. And I said, well, what are you thinking you two do? And she said, well, I'm going to jump out the window. Yeah. And I quickly said, but you're on the second floor. And she said, I know. So, three quick points. She said to me, and I asked her, what do you think should happen? She said, I think the teachers should be armed. Three quick points. You want to end this charity, you want to protect the children, if you really want to protect the children, then you abolish gun-free zones in the United States of America. Two, the second thing you do is you arm and train willing, willing teachers to defend the children. And the third thing you do is you put a sign over every entrance and exit that says, warning. If you intend to harm our children, you will be met with deadly force. I promise you, no one's going to come in that door. They won't come in. I leave you with this song. My father fought in every major battle in the Second World War in the Pacific. And my wife's father landed in Normandy and fought all the way to Berlin. They did not do those things and all the lives and treasures that were lost to have this happen in this country of ours. Are you up for the fight? Are you ready to get back? Then you all of you need to come out in droves and wipe out every single person that violated their oath of office in your state house. You get rid of this government. You get rid of it. I don't care Republican, Democrat. If they voted to sponsor a bill that restricts your gun rights, you get rid of them and put people in that believe in this country and believe in the Constitution. Thank you for giving me the time.
Antonio getting up in front of his town hall saying he will not comply. There are silly rules in this state. We have to be strict with him. He came up a year ago saying that very same thing. We came up to support him. We have him on the front of the front of our organization, our Tom, and he's worried that he's going to be here today. We took our time out of our lives with Sun Joe, for you to bring forth. Come on! Carry on. 